Hey guys and welcome to the VFX vlog where you get to ask me filmmaking and visual effects related questions and I will try my best to answer them. In the first part of this vlog I'm going to talk a little bit about how to best get started learning visual effects, especially a tool like After Effects is complicated to pick up. I'm going to show you how to kind of keep motivated and make sure that you progress from basic to intermediate to advanced level. In the second part, I'm going to show you how to export your video from After Effects, especially around how to manage your settings to control the file size you're going to get out, the quality and whether it contains audio or not. When you start learning visual effects, the first question is where do I get started and what tool do I need? Now, there are a number of great tools available. After Effects is my weapon of choice, but there's other great tools like HitFilm 2, Sony Vegas, obviously Motion and Final Cut on the Mac. Doesn't really matter too much which one you get started with because the concepts and the basic principles of visual effects are always the same. Once you've picked a tool, you need to find tutorials that are at your level. That means they need to be challenging enough to teach you something new, but not so challenging that you just get discouraged and kind of drop it and just give up. Obviously all of my tutorials do focus on Adobe After Effects, but if you've picked Adobe After Effects, I've actually organized all of my videos and my tutorials in a way that makes it really easy for you to pick a tutorial that is exactly at your level. And I'm just going to show you how. The first place I recommend you check out if you want to learn Adobe After Effects is my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash surface studio. Obviously it is my own channel, so I'm going to promote it, but I also think I actually have a lot of really, really good material for beginners and intermediate users of Adobe After Effects. If you're just getting started, do start with the Adobe After Effects beginner tutorials. There's a whole set of them. Do start at the beginning, so number one will show you the basic workflow of Adobe After Effects, what it's used for, and it will guide you through creating a very simple explosion effect. Then it'll go into the basic concepts like pre-composing, masking layers, track mats, parenting, expressions and so on and so forth, but it'll build the base knowledge of how to use Adobe After Effects. Once you're through the basics, move on to the intermediate ones. These are more cool, more practical effects that you can do, which is bullet hits, tracking, morphing, explosions, a lot of more practical effects that you can actually apply directly in your own video projects. Once you're through with the intermediate ones, once you're getting bored of them, you're like, I need something more, you can move on to the advanced tutorials. Here you will learn things like moving your camera through the wall, there's 3D integration, which is actually integrating a 3D program with your Adobe After Effects workflow to create very, very realistic, but very complicated effects. There's more advanced 3D camera tracking or you know explosion effects with moving footage. These ones are all a lot more advanced and you probably should have a really good understanding of Adobe After Effects before attempting any of those. I'm not sure you're all aware of this, but I actually do have a website, which is surfacestudio.com, where I actually write up most of my YouTube tutorials in detail with step-by-step -step images of how to create these effects. So if you are having trouble with an intermediate or advanced tutorial, you can always come over here and for example, let's have a look at the motorcycle explosion one. And in the post itself, you'll find obviously a link to the tutorial and then there's a step-by-step -step description of how to create this effect. Um, it's got tags so you can search for, I wanna find more action effects tutorial or after effects tutorial. The other thing as well that I have at the very top, you've got a navigation bar and under VFX tutorial, obviously you can see them categorized. So you can search only beginner, intermediate, advanced tutorials. You can look for anything with After Effects for general filmmaking or 3D integration, or you can just click on all and you get all of the tutorials available on my website. So make sure you pick something that will suit you that A, you're interested in, but B, that is also challenging enough to teach you something new. Another resource that I've been using when I learned After Effects is Video Copilot. Now Video Copilot, has some very advanced tutorials. They are going very in-depth and they're great effects to learn. They are fun. Andrew Kramer is hilarious as a presenter. He makes awesome tutorials and I've learned most of the things that I know about After Effects from him and from his tutorials. So do go check that out once you're past the beginning stages of After Effects. But just make sure you pick a tutorial to follow that is at your level. Obviously look at some of the super advanced ones just to see what you can really do with After Effects. Just make sure you pick a tutorial that you'll actually enjoy following. I hope that gives you some tips and some guidelines on how to stay motivated and make sure that you're actually progressing and learning new things each time. And now for the After Effects part of this vlog. A lot of questions I get from people are around people getting stuck on exporting videos from After Effects, people managing to export but ending up with videos that are five gigabytes in size are just humongous. They're really low quality or they're expecting to have audio but they do not. Now exporting videos from After Effects is actually fairly simple but you do need to know what all of the settings are for on the export dialog to make sure that you end up with a file that's not too crazy sized, that's good quality and that, if you want audio, has audio. So I'm going to jump into After Effects and show you exactly how to do that. 
All right, to show you how to export videos from After Effects, here's a clip that you may remember from my HitFilm 2 Muscle Flash tutorial. Now, this clip is five seconds long, which is actually fairly short, but you'd be surprised how big the video files can get because I tend to export at 1080p. If you're uploading to YouTube, do think about whether you really need 1080p. Quite often, 720 or even lower is usually sufficient, but let's get to export this composition. Now, you can, and a lot of people do end up going here, File, Export, now you can export your video using the media encoder. I've never done this before. I can't comment on this, but I'm pretty sure there's lots of tutorials that show you how to actually do this. Adding things to the render queue is usually what I will do, but I don't usually go through this menu. Instead, I actually go through composition because I've got a composition selected and then go add to render queue. Now I'm gonna enlarge this a little bit. This is my render queue. This is where you define the quality and the render settings that you want for your final video. And this is where you export the final file to. What I'm going to do is under render settings, you can just click on this. Currently it's set to best settings. So this means it's being exported at full resolution. You can go half, third, quarter, etc. Again, this affects your file size. And then there's a whole bunch of other settings. I've never really touched any of these. Obviously make sure that your frame rate matches what you want to export and you can customize which area of your video to export. Yeah, I usually leave this on default because that means it'll export the entire composition. The only thing that's really important is the resolution, which I'm just going to leave on full. Now, much more important to the quality of your final video, in my opinion, and the final output size is the output module. So I'm going to click on lossless here. This is currently being exported as an AVI. AVI is uncompressed video format and it tends to be incredibly big. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to export it just with the default options, just for you. Just going to run this export, I'm going to hit render. And I'm going to have a look at the file size so we can compare it to some other export options that you have. Carnage AVI. 718 megabytes all up for five seconds of video. Obviously it's 1080p, so I expect it to be fairly big. But what we can do, you can actually control D these settings as well if you just want to duplicate what you had before. Let's not touch the settings, we'll just leave the, this on best, but let's change the output. I like to output as QuickTime. QuickTime is compressed and you can control how much compression will be applied, which then affects the final size and quality of your video. The other important thing, video output. Under video output, you can select which channels to export. You can export RGB, only alpha or RGB and alpha. This I only ever do when I actually export another layer that I want to reuse in After Effects. The actual final VFX clip, I just export as RGB. The most important thing to controlling the size and the quality of your final video is the format options. Here you get a basic quality setting. For QuickTime, especially at a fairly high resolution, personally, I think you can export at 50% and you can't really tell, and the file size is quite a bit smaller than at 100%. Um, anything below 50%, you may start seeing some artifacts, but do give it a try. The file sizes are significantly smaller than at higher qualities, but obviously the quality may suffer. So I usually leave it at 50%, which is fine. You cannot see that it's been compressed at 1080p. Then you can apply other effects. I usually don't do this. You can change the color depth, or you can resize your image, you can crop it. Important here, for people who want audio in their exported video, because they have audio in the clips that they use in After Effects, this needs to be to on. In, I think, After Effects CS6 or earlier, this is just a checkbox to say export audio or not. If you don't tick this checkbox, After Effects will not export any audio at all, and you'll wonder why you have a silent movie on your hands. Audio is usually disabled by default. Make sure you enable it if you want audio in your final video. Then hit OK. Obviously, you can change the output file to whatever you want and hit Render. I've already rendered this out in a number of different quality options. This is a file exported 1080p at 100% quality is 560 megabytes for a five second clip. So that's the clip. Looks pretty damn good. It is highest quality 100%. Let's look at the one that is 50%. 50% is 406 megabytes. So this is almost 30% smaller than the file we exported at 100%. If we look at this video, looks pretty much the same as the one we exported at 100%. There might be a few small artifacts within the black areas on my shirt. I can see a tiny, tiny bit of like grizzling particle effects, but it's really hardly noticeable. If you upload this to YouTube, nobody will notice. At 10%, we're almost at 60% reduction from the 100% compressed. Um, if you open this up, yeah, I'm starting to see some artifacts for compression, but Right now, you may not be able to see the difference in quality just looking at it on YouTube. But just try a few different options and see what works best for you. And that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this vlog. You know the drill. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them in the section below and I will get around to answering them. 
Also, if you would like to show some support, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that like button, share the video around. It really helps out a lot. And you know, you can also find and follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later. Thank you.